Welcome back to Last Touch channel. My name is Anton Vjeltsin. I'm an attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. Today we're going to discuss the Fourth Amendment and Terry stops and frisks. Now let's start with this premise. The Fourth Amendment protects against unreasonable searches and seizures and generally speaking officers need to have a warrant before they conduct a search. And the Supreme Court also told us that warrantless searches are per se unreasonable under the Fourth Amendment. Now, of course, there are exceptions to the rule, and one of those exceptions is called a Terry stop and frisk. Now, we call it a Terry stop because of a landmark decision from the Supreme Court called Terry v. Ohio. I have previously discussed that case on this channel, and of course, I encourage you to go back and watch that video to get a better understanding on Terry stops and frisks. But today, we're going to discuss a different appellate decision that has to look at the Terry stop and determine what the officers needed in order to frisk a particular individual who is simply standing on the side of the street. And before we go on, I want to thank you for watching me on YouTube, hitting that subscribe button, and most importantly, sharing my channel with your friends and family as it helps me grow this channel. And if you're listening to the podcast version of this recording on Audible or Spotify, please consider giving my podcast a five-star re rating. And finally, if you want to support this channel, please go to lostash.com and check out some of the merch, including these Do Not Arrest This Person t-shirts. Thanks for watching. Quick message from Lostash. Are you charged with a crime? Or do you want to know your rights if stopped by police? Watch California attorney Anton Vjeltsin discuss legal cases from the Supreme Court, Ninth Circuit, and California State Courts on the Lostash YouTube page. Anton has handled hundreds of federal and state criminal cases, has an in-depth knowledge of the law, and has the best mustache ever. Subscribe to the Lost Ash YouTube page. That's L-A-W-S-T-A-C-H-E. Today we're discussing United States versus Haygood, which is a federal appellate decision dealing with the Fourth Amendment and Terry stops and frisks. Before we discuss the law, it is important for me to give you some factual background. And a lot of times, I provide that to you from memory, but in some decisions, I think it's important for me to actually give you quotations because that is the testimony that was used from the officers to establish probable cause or reasonable suspicion. So let's take a look at the facts. Around 1 a.m. in the morning, officers are patrolling a high crime area, which they later testify is has a lot of gang related activity including shootings homicides assaults and robberies they observe mr haygood and one other individual standing next to a vehicle that's double parked in a bus lane and we're talking about new york city here officers drive slowly and observe for about two three seconds these three individuals here's what they notice in those two three seconds that Mr. Haygood is wearing a fanny pack strapped over his shoulder and across his chest. The officers later testify that it was being worn in a manner that was not consistent with everyday wear of it. It was tied across his chest with about a quarter to a third of it under his armpit. He kept it steady in one spot. It appeared heavy, like there was a weighted object inside. The officers observed a bulge in the fanny pack and one of the officers said that he saw an elongated rigid solid object within the fanny pack that looked like it was in a line and had a heart at the top and it appeared to be potentially the top of the slide of a handgun the officers also testified that mr haygood appeared nervous and when the officers drove by he had that deer in the headlights look. The officers, based on what they observed, made a decision to conduct a Terry stop and frisk. So they briefly detained Mr. Haygood and searched his fanny pack. Inside they found a loaded semi-automatic 9mm pistol, two packs of cigarettes, and a bag of cough drops. He was then arrested under 18 USC 922 G as being felon in possession. He argued that the Terry stop was illegal in a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Now he lost that argument in the district court 
and entered what's called a conditional plea, meaning that he pled guilty to the crime, but he was permitted to argue that the search was illegal and move the case forward into the appellate level. So he received a 27-month sentence, and now he appeals once again and says that the officers could not search his fanny pack without a warrant. The Fourth Amendment protects the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. This is the Fourth Amendment. Warrantless searches and seizures are per se unreasonable under the Fourth Amendment, subject only to a few specifically established and well delineated exceptions. The Terry investigative stop and frisk is one of those exceptions. In Terry v. Ohio, a Supreme Court case from 1968, and its progeny, the Supreme Court made clear that the police can stop and briefly detain a person for investigative purposes if the officer has a reasonable suspicion supported by articulable facts that criminal activity may be afoot. Similarly, a Terry frisk requires reasonable suspicion not only that criminal activity is afoot, but also that the person suspected is armed and dangerous. Now that we know the legal standard, let's apply it to the facts. Or at least let's take a look how the lower level district court does it. They say because we're dealing with a high crime area late at night, the officer's observations of the fanny pack that appears to have a bulge consistent with the shape of a firearm and the fact that Mr. Haygood appeared nervous when the officers drove by, the lower level district court says that that supports reasonable suspicion. Additionally, the officer testified that the fanny pack appeared heavy, like there was a weighted object inside of it, and contained an elongated, rigid, solid object that appeared to be potentially the top of the slide of a handgun. The officer also knew that firearms were increasingly concealed in fanny packs based on his experience and specialized training, including briefing from the New York Police Department Intelligence Bureau about guns being kept in fanny packs, knowledge that other officers in his precinct had recovered dozens of firearms from fanny packs, and personal experience recovering firearms from fanny packs in approximately 10 to 20 other incidents. So the officer's observations of a bulge consistent with the shape and placement of a firearm supports a finding of reasonable suspicion that Haygood was engaged in criminal activity, namely unlawful possession of a firearm. On appeal, Mr. Haygood disagrees with such analysis, and he brings up two additional points. The first one he says that it was impossible for the officers to notice and have reasonable suspicion of any criminal activity because after all, their observations were only for two, three seconds late at night from 30 feet away. But the appellate court disagrees with Mr. Haygood and says the district court reasonably concluded that for an experienced officer's focused on Haygood, a few seconds while driving at a slow rate of speed were sufficient to observe a stationary and well-illuminated person wearing a weighted bag across his chest. Now, Mr. Haygood then makes a second argument. He says that we're talking about a generic rigid line. And while the officers say that that appeared to be a firearm, he said that that line could have happened and be bulging from any other object. And in fact, we do know that at the end of the day, officers also found two packs of cigarettes. And presumably, those packs have a rigid edge to them. And so maybe the officers were observing those packs of cigarettes inside his fanny pack. We're talking about a bag that you cannot see through. And of course, officers are just looking at shapes. Here, the appellate court again disagrees with Mr. Haygood and says determination that reasonable suspicion exists need not rule out the possibility of innocent conduct. 
At the end of the day, the appellate court says that the reasonable suspicion existed under the totality of circumstances test, meaning that it existed when we look at all of these factors together. We can't focus on just one. And here's what the appellate court says. The district court correctly concluded that Haygood unusual way of wearing the fanny pack, his nervous demeanor, and the time and location of the encounter reinforced its finding of reasonable suspicion, even though such observations would fall well short of establishing reasonable suspicion if made in isolation. So what do you think? Was there reasonable suspicion to conduct a frisk and search of Mr. Haygood? Or do you think that was not enough? And by the way, when we look at these decisions, the law is never black and white, and it is okay to disagree. In fact, one of the justices wrote a decision of his own saying that he disagreed. And here's what that particular judge said. Circuit Judge Calabresi wrote that the ordinary reasonable person looking at this case would describe it as follows. The officer drove by Michael Haygood late one night from 30 feet away and had a two or three second window during which he observed Mr. Haygood. The officer saw Haygood standing outside, calmly talking to two friends and wearing a fanny pack over his shoulder and across his chest. For whatever reason, the officer had a hunch that Haygood was up to no good. The officer acted on his hunch and decided to find a way to search Haygood. His hunch turned out to be right. Haygood was indeed a past felon improperly in possession of a gun. But a hunch does not meet a reasonable suspicion standard. And there are plenty of cases out there that repeatedly said that officers cannot work on a hunch. They do have to, in fact, establish reasonable suspicion or probable cause depending on on what the Fourth Amendment requires. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment below what you think about this case and whether there was reasonable suspicion. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, so next time I post, you're first to know. And if you listen to this podcast on Audible or Spotify, please consider giving a five-star review rating. And finally, if you want to support this channel, consider going to lostash.com and checking out some of the merch, including these Do Not Arrest This Person t-shirts. Thanks for watching.